Welcome back into Stream It Sports. We are live at the NAC. I'm Josh Dover, Adam Kinney with me. First half in the books here at the North Area Athletic Complex. Stanley Lake Gators lead 26 to seven. We're about 90 seconds from getting it on again in the second half, live from the NAC. Thanks for being with us here on Stream It Sports, Adam. To recap this first half, a few things stand out. A couple of big plays for both sides. Green Mountain gets on the board to end, but what stood out? Uh, first, you got to bring up the tight end, Connor Durant, with two touchdowns on two really lengthy receptions on the evening so far for the Stanley Lake Gators. I mean, he's, he's probably so far our leader in the clubhouse for our next level, next student, level athlete. student athlete player of the game. Uh, I also want to mention Michael Kerr and Kellen Muller, kind of the one-two punch at the running back position for the Gators. Who Kerr's gotten into the end zone, but Muller's kind of set up, you know, with some long runs and receptions. And then I don't want to omit Jacob Naranjo, the guy getting them the football right. down the football field, and with a rushing touchdown to his credit this evening as well. That gives the San Lee Gators a big lead going into the second half but it was a touchdown by the Rams to end the first half on a kind of scramble by Dylan Jacob coming around the edge wasn't really sure which quarterback they were going to go with more Jacob's kind of been the featured guy he's the guy getting more of an opportunity and he does kind of buckle up and lead them on a scoring drive right before halftime trying to switch momentum a little bit so and now we're responsible for three touchdowns as you said a couple in the air to Durant and then the one that he sneaks right through we want to talk about adjustments. What kind of things do the Rams need to do to make adjustments to bounce back? And what do the Gators need to do on the other side to keep this lead and build upon it? I mean, I think that the Rams need to really just build on what they did on that final drive. They had a good mix of run and pass going down the field by getting it to their big running back voice. He, he was able to bounce some things on the outside, and they were still able to go down. They gave them a little piece of their own medicine, in a sense, getting the ball down the field to the tight end, the also kicker for the Rams. Chance. And had, had a good good balanced offense. I think you need to see more of that and no penalties. That's the other thing that's yeah. just killed the Rams in this game is just procedural penalties on whether it be just false starts or it was delay a game, penalty after penalty to set them back in so many drives. You want to see them kind of continue that momentum. On the other side of the ball with the Gators, I think that you know the, the only blemish in the first half was giving up that score late, and they just need to keep playing the same game that they played in the first half, and they're going to be fine. Chance Boyce came into this football game averaging 195 yards a game, five touchdowns on the year. Last week in the win, 28-10 win for the Rams over Golden, Chance Boyce carried the football 25 times. He rushed for 211 yards and scored twice in last week's victory. Adam, we don't have the stats sitting right in front of us, but I'd be shocked if Chance Boyce was at even 70 yards in that first half. That front seven of the Gators, include those linebackers back there, really put a damper on what the Rams wanted to do as far as getting Chance Voice involved in the game plan. Right, and I think that's why it's so important that they need to continue to have a balanced offense so that they can open things up a little bit for their best player offensively. Coming up for the Gators, they're going to be playing Green or at Littleton on the 18th next week and then for the Green Mountain Rams they're at Evergreen on the 19th next week. So the Gators who came into this matchup 0-2 they're sitting pretty right now to pick up their first win still a lot of football to play so we'll see how they respond with a lead they continue to let their running back Michael Kerr and mix in a little bit of Kellen Muller to keep the clock moving or do they trust in their star Jacob Nahoro and continue to throw the football downfield, take a few chances, and try to build upon this lead. I think that that's how you have the mindset that you have to have to come out was to build upon the lead. You, you don't want to settle in too early because that's how teams are let back into football games. Now, if you're Jared Whalen, head coach of the Rams, after that drive that you saw with Dylan Jacob, is he your guy the rest of the night, or do you like to see him kind of mix in the other quarterback here and there, possibly? You know, I, I liked what they did with Hayward. They gave him a series. He came in, kind of a change of pace back. You mentioned it. Coach told us before the game he's a guy that has the wheels. He can be successful in those read options. And again, as I said in the first half, this Gators defense, they're playing on their toes. They're ready to make plays. you got to get these guys playing on their heels. You want their first steps when the ball is snapped to be reactionary and take a step backwards. They're running downhill at this point. Yeah. And, and Hayward, I think, with the change of pace, can change some things up. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in early 
and, and Coach Jared Whalen trying to get the Gators just a little discombobulated. And to Mo Coach Morse's credit, you know, they, he kind of executed the game plan that they had in the first half. They wanted to you know, flock exactly. to the football and be very physical defensively, and that's exactly what they did. There's the kick. We're underway in the second half here at the NAC on Stream at Sports. Again, that one's going to get behind the Bear Mountain. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Bear Mountain kick returner. And he stumbles at about the 10, maybe 9-yard line. That was number 47, Sean Carlson, the returner there. Another tough start for the half where you, you thought the Rams were going to try and build on the momentum from that great drive that they had just before halftime, and they're already kind of behind the eight ball starting inside their ten yard, their own three-yard line. That's what it appears, four-yard line. So the Rams score the touchdown to end the half. You think they start to get a little bit of that momentum, the mo rolling their way. And now they start at the three-yard line. It is Dylan Jacob. Under center, Chance Boys behind him, tight end, in motion. And they're going to start with the throw. Jacob. I like the aggressive play calls right out of halftime, but just a little bit overthrown. He's looking for Sean Carlson. That's number two, Dakota Agata, on the coverage for the Gators. He is step for step with Sean Carlson. Even if that ball was in place, it would have been anybody's football as Carlson Agata running stride for stride second and 10 now that played just 11 seconds off the clock and Jacob again going to go under center chance voice behind him by himself two wide receivers set tight end on the far side is going to come in motion towards us line up as your fullback right in front of chance voice they'll hand that one off to voice kind of a counter but again voice is only going to get you two yards maybe going to be looking at third and nine, third and eight. And that's just kind of a safe play call where you're going to try and hand it off to your fullback, see if you could get four or five yards when you're pinned up against your own goal line, especially after the incompletion on first down. But it doesn't get them that way. It gets them actually a loss of one, it appears. That's what yep, they call right, it. right, third and 11. So again, a big third down for the Rams, who backed up at their four-yard line right now. If you have to punt from this situation, you're kicking from the back of your end zone. And the Rams have already had some issues this evening getting the football to their punter. They're going to get encroachment Clean. there. So they're going to get a little room unless an offensive lineman moved. Didn't look like it from where I'm sitting. And that's exactly right. Encroachment called. So the Rams will have a little breathing room. They'll make it third and six, a little bit more manageable. Still inside your own 10-yard line. Of course, they're aiming for a first down. But if you have to punt... That gives your punter a little breathing room, too. Doesn't have to have his heels up to make sure he's not stepping on that in line for a safety. We're going to have Jacob under center again. Chance Boyce by himself. You see the tight end in motion. Going to line up in the fullback position. They're going to pitch that to Boyce. He loses the football oh. on the ground. Fumble, and that looks like a recovery for the Gators. What a big shift in momentum. Trying to build on that drive at the end of the first half, and you just gave the Gators a gift at the goal line. Now the Gators going to be in a first and goal situation. Look looked like, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, Adam, but Chance Boyce looked like he just tried to run before we caught the football. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what it looked like. Just got a little ahead of himself. First turnover of the game. We've seen the Gators. First play of the game, the Gators had a fumble. They were fortunate enough to recover. It actually resulted in first down for the Gators, but... Now the first turnover of the game, Chance Boyce fumbles. Gators first and goal. Turnaround pitch, this to Kerr. He stood up, still spins around, fights forward. I believe that will be a Stanley Lake touchdown. And it is, so Michael Kerr Scores his second touchdown. I tell you game. what, at halftime I told you that Connor Durant may have been the front runner for the next level student athletes player of the game, but I think that Michael Kerr may have ran himself for his second score today. He's still in that conversation. His first one, a five-yard touchdown. They're going to go for two with the troubles that they've been having converting the extra point attempt. 32-7 right now. Here it is. It's going to be a fade route back of the end zone. Double covered, still makes the catch. And who else? Connor Durant. As soon as I count him out, he comes right back in. 
34 to seven lead, commanding now. So for chance, the Stanley Lake Gators. Chance Boyce with the fumble. Got to be frustrated right now with your Chance Boyce, a kid that dominates the yep. week in and week out. And this Gator front seven, make it eight when they flood the box with those linebackers, giving him no room to operate. And that time, flat out fumble the football. Got to wonder what that's going to do for his confidence moving forward. Well, if you want to dominate week in and week out, you could go visit our friends at 6 Zero Strength. Building better athletes will with the will to be great. They prepare athletes for the next level, both physically and mentally. Visit their website at 60strength.com. Now the Gators will kick off. To the Rams, last two kickoffs have gotten behind the Rams. This one's gonna go right to a, a Ram player and he will do the smart thing and fall on top of it. That's number 22, Daniel Scott for the Rams. And you can hear the Stanley Lake cheer team. They're counting. They're going to get to 34, doing jumping jacks. Do you want to join them, Josh? It's a little chilly. You could warm yourself up a little, a little bit. bit. I'd like to see him do push-ups, keep those high school kids in shape. <laughs> <laughs> Rams now in the shotgun formation for the first time this time. It's still Jacobs. And the read option, he decides to hand off to Chance Boyce, and Boyce stopped for no gain. I do, I do like that they still go with Boyce. I mean, he's their workhorse, and they're, they're still going to be confident in him after putting the ball on the turf. And that's got to do a lot for Boyce himself, to know that the coaches trust you enough to go right back to you. On the first play right after. Right. Got to have a short memory. So now we're looking at second and 12. They lose two on that one. Shotgun formation again for Jacobs. Boyce standing right next to him on his right side. And he's going to hand off to Boyce. Boyce up the middle. Now he's going to get those couple yards back. Maybe one extra. Could be third and nine, third and eight, depending on the spot of the football from the official. And it looks like it's going to be third and eight. I'll tell you, I am a little surprised by the play calling to start this drive. It's the first time that they've really had okay field position to start and then two handoffs for a gain of one is what you end up with. Third and nine. We see them take a shot on their first play from half downfield. I thought they would kind of do the same thing. Again, trying to get this defense to play on its heels. Jacobs in the shotgun. Fake handoff to Boyce this time. Going to take a shot downfield right through the hands. Looks like number 28 down there. Josiah Bales who couldn't make the catch. That was on target from Jacobs. Maybe a little too hot, and Bales couldn't hang on. But he was at the first down marker with a little room to run. That would have been a first down. And Bales has the lone receiving touchdown of the season for the Rams so far. Coming into tonight's matchup, three receptions for 76 yards. It looks like a flag on the play. That's going to bail the Rams out. Must have been a pass interference down the field. So They're moving it quite a ways. 15 yards, and we'll have a first and 10 from the 47-yard line for the Green Mountain Rams. So a big break for the Rams there. It looked like they were set to stay on the field regardless and go for it on fourth down as they trail 34-7 with nine and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Jacobs back under center, calling for motion. Chance Boyce behind him by himself. Going to turn around, play action. Not going to fool anyone. Good job from Jacobs to get rid of the football. They're actually going to gain a couple off of that. He saw the pressure coming off the edge, and he didn't panic and just fall to the ground taking the sack. And he's able to find the open fullback in the flat to gain a couple of yards. It was Grant Gladstone. Really a seven, eight-yard swing there. And Gladstone didn't fall for the play-action fake, stayed in his lane, and chased Jacobs. Good job by Dylan, the sophomore, to stay on his feet and get rid of the football as he was dragged to the ground by Gladstone. Now Jacobs under center, that tied in in motion, going to run away from us. Line up right in front of Chance Boyce. Fake to the fullback, handoff to Boyce. Boyce going to pick up about five, driven backwards, but forward momentum will give him about five yards. You call that a third and two, so. Well, that's third and eight, excuse me. Seemed like he picked up more than that. Yeah, they didn't give him a very... Now they're going to change it third and six. So big third down again. This is certainly four down territory. You're not taking a field goal from there. 
nor would you punt down 34-7. 8.15 to go in the third. Jacobs under center, chance by himself in the backfield. But Jacobs called for motion, no one came. Timeout, a little confusion there on the Ram side. You seen him move that foot, that's usually when that tight end comes back and falls back into the fullback position. By the time he called for it, no one moved. I think it confused everyone. Just gonna use a 30 second timeout here. Rams have been pretty liberal with the way they've been using their timeouts. They didn't leave any on the board in the first half. Thought it may bite them to end that first half, but uh, of course, Jacobs was able to score that touchdown to end the second half and put the Rams on the board. So there's one of the timeouts gone for Green Mountain. See if it comes back to Hanum towards the end of this game. 34-7 is the score, 8.07 to go here in the third. It's a third and six for Green Mountain when we come back. And they're gonna break their huddle as Stanley Lake breaks their huddle on the sideline and comes back onto the field for this big third down play. I think you're right, it's, it's four down territory. If you're, if you're in the plus side of the field, it's four down territory every time if you're the Rams. A little bit of a benefit for head coach Jared Wallen too, knowing that it is. Oh, There's some movement up front. Start. That's Sean Carlson, near side. You've seen him accelerate off the line. Well, he might have been just going based on the offensive lineman that jumped earlier. It's always, always confusing to me when a wide receiver is called for false start. You watch the ball. Right. <laughs> So that hurts, certainly. Now third and 11, that would have been third and six. Still, yeah, you're right, Adam, four down territory regardless. They're still on the plus side of the 50. Tied in in motion, running away from your screen. Gonna play action to Boyce. Great job from these Stanley Lake defenders. You see that defensive end untouched, but doesn't chase the football, stays in his lane. And, and it may not be four down territory as the offense is leaving the field. Yeah. They're going to find it about midfield. Surprising still down 34-7. Still fourth and 11. Your odds of converting that are pretty odd. Maybe you can get a punt and create a turnover near the goal line. Might be a better option. It was Dakota Ogata again, and I, I'm just really impressed with the discipline of this Gators defense. That one way high. Great control of the snap for the Bears. Almost. That's going to be down right at the one-yard line. Heck of a punt. That's number nine, Ben Schleipler. We've seen him make a great catch in the first half. It seems like every time he's punting the football, he has to overcome a bad snap. He does a great job there to corral the high snap, then get the punt off and let it roll to the one-yard line, which is where the Gators will start. It's really the first time that we're going to see the Gators backed up against their own end zone. If you want to get your school's games live streamed, whether it's basketball, hockey, rugby, or any other sport, you can email Phil at streamatsports.com for details. Now the Gators backed up against their own goal line. Break their huddle. It's Michael Kerr. About four yards, five yards deep in his own end zone, full house formation. Going to turn around, hand the ball off to Kerr. He has a big hole. Still on his feet, breaks a couple of tackles, misses again, big block downfield, and Michael Kerr is off to the races. Could this be a 99-yard touchdown? There's a flag on the near side at the 50. We'll see what it was, but Michael Kerr, 99 wow, yards. what a way to respond if it does stand. Great blocking downfield by the Gators. Let's see if it comes back to haunt them. You see Don Morris, he wants an explanation. Referees will converge on the near side of your screen. Don Morris is holding up the one as if that's going to count, and they're going to go for one. Here's the call. And it is on. Touchdown's that's good. Touchdown. Wow. 99 yard touchdown from Michael Kerr. Well, I did mention it <laughs> on his second touchdown run that he had an opportunity to become the next level student athlete player of the game, but a 99 yard touchdown run has definitely put him right in the running there with Connor Durant. So pending the extra point, they are gonna go for one here. We're gonna be looking at 41 to seven. 
Michael Carter just making people miss and kudos to the wide receivers. Continuing with the play, you never give up, run with the ball carrier downfield and make some blocks. Fake kick here and not executed well. I don't know if that was even by design or if he just couldn't get the handle on the football off of the snap to be able to get it upright enough for the kicker to drill it through. It was Jalen Williams for the Gators who's holding the football. He had a touchdown last week but couldn't convert there. Make it 40 to seven, Stanley Lake. A couple updates on scores around high school football. Grandview jumps way ahead of Arapaho, 49 to 13 in that one. So Grandview will remain undefeated. Fairview still 28-21 over Horizon. Hinkley up 24 to 10 over Gateway. Actually, that game has gone final. So the Hinkley Thunderbirds go to go. three and one on the year. Grandview put it on. I was surprised when you said that uh, Arapaho was only trailing by a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Those of you that follow the yeah, Colorado Yeah, it was 21 Prep to 13 scene. as our last update. Yeah, you know Grandview is a juggernaut. Uh, Chapfield, seven to three. You can also hear on stream sports. Exactly, you can see those sweet Nike uniforms that Chatfield's getting to wear. Kick now from the Gators again, slow, about at the 30. This one fielded by Green Mountain out in front. Got some running room, gonna try to break to the outside, still on his feet. Eventually brought down at about the 40 yard line. Good field position to start for the Rams. I want to mention Colorado businesses, you could be a part of these broadcasts. Sponsorship opportunities are limited, so you can contact us to secure a spot in next week's broadcast and for future games. 40 to 7, 727 to go. And the first game that we had here on Stream It, we did see the running clock rule. It was a 58-6 final. And plus 40 as per Chassa will continue a rolling clock. So the Rams still far from over, but need to put some points on the board. They're again in the shotgun formation. It's Dylan Jacob with Chance Boyce off to his right about a yard behind him. There's the snap. Read option again. He decides to give to Chance Boyce. Boyce makes a one defender miss out to about seven yard gain. I think we're gonna be looking at about a second and three, second and two. So in a 40 to seven game, at what point do you, I mean, do you even abandon the running game and just start throwing the ball or is this kind of where you just get your work in for next week, try and build on the things that you can? Yeah, I think if you're a Green Mountain and you know Chance Boyce is your workhorse, you want him to continue to get these reps, if nothing else, for mental confidence for what happens moving forward. So I think they'll continue to see a heavy dose of Boyce, who is again one yard behind Jacobs on his right side. And another read option. This time Jacobs keeps the football. He's out in front with some blockers. Going to try to break to the outside. Does so. we got a flag down. I think that will be holding on Green Mountain as Jacobs tried to turn the corner. Looked like a receiver downfield will be called for a hold and that might come back. Jacobs with the rushing touchdown earlier in the game. Coming into tonight, he had six carries on the season for negative two yards. So showing a little bit different flair to his game. You see the referee there, here's the call. We are marching the football back on a hold. So, March backwards, and second down, and want to mention next week, make sure you turn it into Stream It Sports on Friday. We'll be having Grandview and Thunder Ridge, then Saturday night, Arapaho versus Hinkley. Right. Grandview, just talked about them. Juggernaut, always a great Grandview three and zero versus three and one Hinkley. Shotgun formation. Jacobs now did get it off just in time a couple of stanley lake gators rushing on the outside and there's number 17 for stanley lake brody hoffman he had nine tackles last week putting the pressure and made jacobs get rid of the football before his wide receiver could finish his route and here we go third and one interesting play call there on second and yeah one. Try to catch the Gators sleeping, I guess, with a pass play. And this time, Jacobs will line up under center. Boyce behind him by himself in the backfield. 
That's tight end going to line up as a fullback on the far side. Fake to that fullback. That should be well enough for the first down on the second effort by Boyce. See where they spot the football. They are going to move the chains. First down, Green Mountain. Keep the chains moving. 622. Clock will start to roll when those chains are set. They trail 40 to 7, do the Rams. But driving right now. They break the huddle. Again in the shotgun formation. Two wide receivers set. Voice with Jacobs in the backfield. Here's the snap. Read option again. This time he does give it to Boyce. Boyce tries to break to the outside. Can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Again, kudos. That is a late, late flag. flag. Might have been some extracurricular activities at the yeah. end of the play. I'm going to get an unsportsman like kind of. Here's the call. That's just the frustration of a game when you're down 40 to 7. Riley Summers is called for the unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 60, seeing the referee that made the call come in tell the head official just a spear basically into the ground after the play was dead. So you're right, that's, that's pure frustration. You're down 40 to seven, you can't really move the football. You know, everybody has a breaking point. And timeout now, this one called by the Gators. As a second and 27 approaches, they want to talk about their defensive formation. The Rams will go to their sideline to get direction. We'll take this moment to tell you about the next level student athletes game plan. We're, we're going to name the next level student athlete the player of the game, which very well may be Michael Kerr at this point with three rushing touchdowns. But the next level student athletes game plan is helping high school athletes advance to the next level, strengthening academics, athletics, and social and financial responsibility. Visit www.proplayerservices.com to get your game plan started. So you said it. Michael Kerr put his name to the top of the list. Connor Durant, a very close second. And Naranjo, I think, deserved, and maybe collectively, the Gators' defense deserves a little credit. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll continue to keep an eye out and bring you our player of the game as the broadcast ends here. Jacobs in the shotgun for Mason. It's going to be a pass. Little screen trying to set up Chance Boyce with some space. That's exactly what they do on a second 27. He's got a lot of rushing room, and he will go all the way. That uh, is exactly what the Rams needed. Chance Boyce gets in the end zone. I love the play call on second and 27 where you're just trying to get some positive yards, get a guy in space, and allow him the ability to get down the football field into the end zone. And I'm, I'm honestly surprised they didn't come with this play call before with how aggressive the Gators front seven is being. That's exactly how you counteracted a quick screen play, and it makes those defensive guys think before they just charge with a full head of steam downhill. So maybe that play right there can kind of counteract what the Gators are doing on defense. Great play call. Pinning the extra point, 40 to 14. Snaps down, kicks up, and good. He was perfect on the first point after. They'll make it 40 to 14, the lead now. Dwindling away for the Stanley White Gators. 40-14, under six to go in the third quarter. And again, uh, kudos to the Rams and that play call because that was exactly what they needed in that situation. Now remember, that was coming off of the Gators' timeout. They decided to take the time to try and set their defense on a second and 27, and that really backfired. So they're over there talking about it right now. I'm sure head coach Don Morris isn't happy about it. 40 to 14, and as I said, under six to go. You still have 12 minutes in the first quarter. We're talking about 18 minutes of game time here. Still plenty of time for the Rams to come back. So now the Rams will set to kick. And it looks like they're going to attempt an onside. That's teed up on that far hash mark. So we'll see how this plays out. It doesn't out. really look like the Gators are reacting as if. No, there's still some 70s and 41s on that front line. That's not the hands team. No, just a distraction. They kick it deep. No, got to hang on to it. Out to about the 15-yard line, and that is it. Good coverage by the Rams. On the Gator return, it's number 33, Kellen Muller. 
returning the kick for the Gators. And now the Rams defense comes onto the field with a chance to continue to build on that last score. A stop here, a quick three and out. Anything could happen. You're three scores away for it being a two-score game. <laughs> Again, the whole math thing. <laughs> So the Gators are going to come out from their 15, first and 10, leading 40 to 14. Michael Kerr in the backfield. Kellen Muller also lined up in the tight end position there. And Confusing fumble the balls, balls on the on ground. Turf. Let's see who comes up with this yeah, thing. I, first look, I'm thinking Green Mountain Rams. may get the I can football. I see it's number two who recovered. Let's see who they call. And that's exactly what happened. Mickey Fair recovers the fumble for Green Mountain, and that's exactly what the Rams needed. We talked about a three and out, one play fumble. Even better for the Rams. And it could have been most likely bad snap, bad handoff. And I think that was, that was bad from the snap. I don't even know if he got the opportunity to hand the ball off. Might have been kicked around a little bit with the running back trying to get the football, but. So now the Rams are in business. Starting at their own 15, Boyce behind Jacobs again. One yard behind him and on the right side. Read option again. Hands off to Boyce. Boyce up the middle. Going to keep those feet churning close to a first down for the Rams. This is the strength in those legs at the first stop and just keeps powering down the middle of the field. And maybe that long touchdown on the screen for Boyce is something he needed to get himself going. Now we're looking at... Oh, that was the second and one. Six yard line for the Green Mountain Rams. Got to get inside the five for a first. Now Boyce on the left side of Jacobs, still a yard behind him. Going to be the lead option again. Jacobs does not keep the football, hands off to Boyce, and Boyce will pick up the first down. A little different play calling in the running game here, moving to the read option, allowing the quarterback to make the decision compared to Shifting those tight ends in motion that we've seen so often. And then just handing the football up the middle for no gain. Trying to change some things a little bit in their play calling. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I talked about it. Having that Gator defense play on its heels rather than its toes. The read option does that exactly because the defender can't just run full steam downhill. Now Jacobs under center. Boyce back by himself. There's that tight end in motion. That's Taylor Schiller. We haven't talked about him much. The big star of last week. Hands off to Boyce right up the middle for a gain of a couple. Now at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that same play three more times, unless they get in the end zone before. And that was, as I said, 95 in motion. Taylor Talon, Scheller last week. Uh, we talked to Coach about it before the game. That, you know, he was kind of a sack, a star defensively, and they're and trying to get him point. involved offensively. That's the trifecta. So Green Mountain breaks the huddle. Jacobs under center. Boyce in the backfield by himself. Two wide receivers. There's the tight end in motion. Back is the fullback. Going to turn around, hand the ball off to Boyce, and he will walk in for a Green Mountain touchdown. Boyce gets his second touchdown. Then one receiving, one rushing. That is a about three-yard touchdown for Chance Boyce. 40 to 20. You know, Josh, I kind of poked fun at you when you, you mentioned it, but... Still plenty of time. 341 remaining in the third quarter. You're three scores away. So they will line up for an extra point pending here. It could be 40-21. There's the snap. Kick is up and good. 41, excuse me, 40-21. Gators still lead, but a couple of back-to-back -to -back touchdown for the Rams. And now all of a sudden... The Gators need a big play to get a little momentum back in their favor. Still can't panic, as you said, big lead. Now you just got to come out and execute. So I think that's pretty resilient of the Rams after, in, in this half, you, you give them the football, you give the Gators the football in prime field position for an easy score, and then you think you have them pinned back deep, give up a 99-yard touchdown, and then to come after that with 14 unanswered points. So the kick now again for Green Mountain. 
I mean, if you don't make those two prior mistakes, we're talking about a one-score game right now. Anthony Moore and Kellen Muller back deep to receive the kick for Stanley Lake. There's the kick. Really got a hold of that one. Going to fall into the hands of Kellen Moore. Nope, that is Anthony Moore. He ran out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. So they'll spot it at about the 22-yard line, and that's where Stanley Lake will start this drive with 3.35 to go in the third quarter, holding on to a 40-21 lead. We're at the knack. Stream at Sports, just over Adam Kinney. So again, we talked about the Rams trying to force a three and out, led to a one and out with the fumble on the last possession. See if this defense can make another stand here. Or Michael Kerr does what Michael Kerr does. He's in the backfield by himself. They're going to turn around, fake it to him. This is play action, rolling, looking downfield, uh, just a little outside. Throwing off the wrong foot was Naranjo on that play where we saw him connect deep down the football field earlier in the game, but not able, just overthrows his target on that back shoulder fade. And that was Grant Gladstone, who we talked about a little earlier the intended receiver. But Narajo, as Adam said, that got to just turn around. If you're on the roll and you're on that side at least, stop, plant your feet. I think Narajo had the time to do that. Just didn't. So now second and 10. Michael Kerr by himself in the backfield. As the tailback. This time they will turn around, hand it off to Michael Kerr. He's dancing around, going to pick up about 10, we'll see where they mark it. He may be a yard or two short. That's gonna be about the 30 yard line, which would make for a third and two. So well, even, even before that, that's 29 yard line is where they're gonna spot. It'll make third and three, 302 to go in the third quarter. Big third down coming up for the Rams. If they can get their defense off the football field, so it is again Kerr in the backfield. Two wide receivers set. Naro under center. That Green Mountain defense getting a little movement. excited. Breaks to the outside. Kerr now makes one man miss. There's a flag thrown. Kerr has picked up the first down. And they're going to call a hold on the Gators, which I saw the movement earlier before. I thought they might have gotten a free play. Uh, Kerr is slow to get up. You can see him limping off with some help. And we saw him limp off earlier. He went down and immediately grabbed that knee. Head coach Don Morris out there, you see him bent over talking to his guy. We talked to Morris before the game about that they lost eight starters yeah, in the first couple line. weeks of the season. Hate to see that for the game that Kerr has had. He immediately went down and grabbed that left knee, tried to get back up and walk off under his own power. You see the trainer there holding that left leg. We'll hope the young man is okay. See the training staff and head coach Don Morris bent over Michael Kerr, who has three touchdowns on the day, one of which came off of a 99-yard touchdown run. He's helped up, going to walk off under his own power, but with and his a teammates applaud on the sideline, and the crowd reacts as well. Third and 15 is what is going to be set up now after the hold penalty where Kerr definitely got to the outside enough for the first down, but that's negated. So we'll see if Michael Kerr comes and sits down on the training table or he just tries to walk this thing off. In the back of the Gators bench still limping around. We'll keep an eye on him and update you as we can. Now the Gators facing a third and 15, because as you said, Adam, a holding call that ended that play brought it back. Now third and 15, the Rams are going to, the Gators, excuse me, are going to pass the football. And Nahro short, trying the comeback route right at the sticks, but incomplete, looking for Connor Durant on that far side. So I tell you, Nahro had somebody down. wide open in the middle of the football field, but he was going to his big target regardless on that play. Well, it looks like he did catch the football. I thought that fell short, but they moved the ball. 
Well, they're gonna go four for three, and it may look like they are gonna go for this here. Nahro stays on the field. That's gotta. It's kind of a gutsy call, sure but is. you do still have a. I mean, you're up 40 to 21. If you could get this first down, you're gonna kill a little bit more off the clock and continue that lead. But Says with the momentum that the Rams have kind of mustered up here, Either this coach. is a big call. Don Morris has a lot of confidence in his defense, or zero. Nahro, there's a timeout. And it looks like they were just trying to get a gauge here. Let's see if the punt team comes back on now. That's the second timeout for the Gators. They will only have one left if this thing does end up getting close. you got to imagine that they're going to punt the football away now when they come back. 40 to 21 is the score. 119 to go in the third. Michael Kerr. Still on your Gators sideline. See if he can make a return to this game after leaving on the previous play with what looked like a knee injury. Once again, next week the Gators are gonna match up against at Littleton for a road game on the 18th. And then the Rams will have a road game as well at Evergreen. Don Morris and the Gators change their mind. They'll come out to punt now. Which I think is the right call. You, you try and get him to go off sides. Although, wasting a timeout, your second timeout this early in the third quarter. Snaps back. Good catch on the snap. Punt is away. Fumbled. The Rams pick it up and now running back towards us. Going to get a big block right there. Still on his feet. Still going across the 40. Big, big block there. Both questions. That's Sh Schaller once again. The everyman. He does it all. Those plays coming back. There's not much more dangerous in football than those things coming back and players just chasing. you got to play with your head on a swivel, Heinz Ward once said. They weren't there. <laughs> Was that after Heinz Ward got hit or Heinz yeah. Ward hit somebody else? He hit somebody else. So here comes the Rams. Now in the shotgun formation is Jacobs. Boyce to his right, about a yard behind him. That read option again. Now it's play action. They're going to take a chance downfield. What bit a of catch. And He's shoving. out of bounds. There's a little bit of contact there by the cornerback. I thought they might have gotten a call. I like it. Let him play. That's a heck of a throw from Jacobs. Uh, literally a yard outside. And that could have been a long completion downfield. You see Jacobs and his wide receiver talking about it right now. He was looking for 17. It was Ogata, the corner on the coverage for the Gators, Junior. Donovan Blaze, the wide receiver, intended wide receiver downfield. Second and 10 now, under a minute to go in the third. Jacobs in the shotgun, Boyce to his right. Boyce picks up that blitz. And I think Jacobs felt the pressure, got rid of that one quickly and overthrew his intended receiver. You know, I like the aggressive play calling, but you've gotten two touchdowns from Boyce in this half, and he hasn't touched the football yet. Not on this drive. On this right. drive. Yeah. And now we're looking at third and ten, where a handoff, maybe you try to catch the defense off guard, but hasn't worked all night with this Gator defense. So now if you want to get Boyce involved, it's another one of those screen plays that we saw for the long touchdown. So he's back there by himself in the backfield. The right side. A little pistol formation. Of Jacobs. Jacobs calling for motion. That's Sean Carlson moving away from you. And looking for the quick hitch. It looked like it was supposed to be a screen play. And we got a flag down. I believe it's going to be. It was an illegal block. The wide receiver on that far on. side expected the screen to be thrown, so he was doing his job in making what he thought was a block downfield. The problem was quarterback Dylan Jacobs still had the football in his hand. So it'll, well, they're gonna take a step back, so they'll accept the penalty. Yeah, and it was a, a basically just a tackle. Which I think that's also the right call to accept that penalty in that situation just because it's probably four down territory anyway for the Rams. Mm -hmm. So you might as well give them a third and 15 for the fourth and eight. And that's where we're at right now, third and 15. Jacobs in the shotgun, two wide receivers, Boyce by him by himself. 
Same formation as the previous play. And they're going to pass again. No, this time the delayed handoff didn't fool anybody. Chance Boyce is wrapped up by a couple of Stanley yeah, Lake There won't defenders. be a decision. There's no four-down territory here as the Rams are going to punt the football away. Cesar Gutierrez, the sophomore, 5'10", 240. The big fella got in the backfield to make the tackle and bring up fourth down. This punt will probably be the last play of the quarter if they get it off. That's Carlson going in motion. Snap good this time. And there's the punt from Ben Schleiper. Again, he's going to get a great roll. He's going to stop at about the four-yard line. Scheipler doing everything. 0-0 zero, zero so o'clock. That is the end of the third quarter. 40-21. to 21. The Gators lead with 12 minutes left. Their offense will come onto the field, start at the four. And look to drive down the field one more time and increase their lead. A couple score updates around high school football. We mentioned Hinkley defeats Gateway 24 to 10. Fairview and Horizon are tied at 28 in the fourth quarter. Exciting game there. Lakewood's up nine to seven over Chatfield. Last we saw it was a seven to three lead yeah. on the other side. So Lakeview takes the late lead. They're in the third quarter there. Grandview, as we mentioned, up 49 to 13 over Arapahoe. That game is all but over. Chandler from Arizona up on Valor 22 to seven. So. Valor in a position they're not used to being in. And Monarch. Puts two on the board. Falls. With the short. old pyramid over their head. <laughs> Seven to two. Then the earlier games today. The double overtime thriller, Columbine 43, Bear Creek 42. And a little bit less of a thriller, Alston Valley 58, <laughs> Arvada West 6. That's a game you heard right here, watched right here on stream at sports so we're back fourth quarter about to start stanley lake back up against their own goal not for long though on the run and broke to the outside still on his feet that's number 33 kellen muller doing a little michael kerr impression that's right as michael kerr is still trying to work through the injury i'm looking for him here on the sideline but he is yet to return into the game But I guess if your second guy is going to make runs like that, you can make well, sure you your know, first guy can we, take a break. We talked Coach Morse before this. He was saying it was going to be running back by committee for the most part. And it, obviously Michael Kerr was the guy who got the hot hand early, so he kept going back to him. But there's other guys that he believes in that can still get the job done if you're going by a committee four or five different guys. So here's Stanley Lake again after the big run from Muller. They're going to drop back. Five-step drop for Nahiro. Going to pass. Looking downfield. Wide open. He's got his guy. Now it's a foot race. Can he stay on his feet? He can't. From the 26, Anthony Moore. He was by himself. And Nahiro with the dime. Found Anthony Moore. Anthony Moore, the senior, coming into tonight's game. This is only his second game played of the year. He had four receptions and 34 yards in his last game, but nearly doubled that yardage on that play. Right. So now a first and 10 from the 33 is where the Gators will start, or will pick up, rather, on this drive. Mahro calling the play. That's Durant. You see him running on the top of your screen. Getting to his spot, the big tight end. A couple of big gainers, only two Plays on the drive. Now he's going to turn around and hand the football off. That time going nowhere. That's another running back. There's 28, Ty Hammock, who got his first carry of the game right there. Only third carry of the season. Ty Hammock, the sophomore, 5'9", 160. He also plays a little bit of linebacker. So he loses a yard officially. Second and 11 for Stanley Lake. Aho under center, one wide receiver. He's going to turn around and play action this time. Good block on the outside, looking downfield. Wasn't a whole lot there to throw to. Yeah, small window. He was looking for number 16. That's Jalen Williams. He had the touchdown last week in the loss to Monarch. Jalen Williams, a senior. 
And he's going to run off the field, and you see Durant running back on. So this brings up third and 11. I think we may have seen the last of Michael Kerr on the evening. He's not been in on this drive at all. Maybe a precautionary to make sure he's safe and ready to go for next week when the Gators take on Littleton. Now Nahro under center. Third and 11. That's Muller in motion. Fake to one side to set up the screen on the other, and it's a big screen. Wide open, good blocking downfield. Still on his feet, going to fall short of the goal line. About the 26, Anthony Moore again moves the Gators and moves the chains to keep the drive going. Now Moore is going to call for a sub. At least 50 yards receiving just on this drive alone for Anthony Moore. That was really set up by the fellow blocking that he got from his fellow wide receivers. They're good. not so much what they did with the offensive linemen, but... It's a great play call from Coach Don Morris. Fake the quick outlet on the left side and then turn around and throw it on the right side with a couple of blockers running downfield. And we have an injured Ram on the play as well. That's Mickey Fair. Who picked up the fumble, I believe, That's right. earlier. So he's favoring He's going to get up on leg. his own power, though, and walk towards his sideline on the far side. It looks like he'll come back in. Doesn't seem to be in too much pain. We'll keep an eye on Moore, who also stepped off the field somewhat limping after the big game. He's got his helmet off and talking to his teammates. Looks to be okay as Moore. If you've loved what you've seen on the broadcast, don't forget to go to Stream at Sports' store and purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy today. That's right, Blu-ray for your high school sports. So I see Michael Kerr. He is sitting down on the bench, helmet off. I think you're right, Adam. He is done for the day. Naho under center, turns around, hands the football off to Muller, but Muller stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's going to lose a yard or two. It's been big play or nothing on this drive for the Gators. Nine and a half minutes to go. Gators still lead 40 to 21. And driving... Now, ball is at the eight-yard line. Nahro under center. It's Muller again in the backfield. This time, play action to Muller. He's got his tight end. Incomplete. Durant couldn't come up with that, or that wasn't Durant. That was... That's number six on that side. Grant Gladstone, the other tight end. Also defensive end. So that'll bring up third and eight. For the Gators. And running onto the field. That's number 41 to give the play. Nick Hubbock. And the Gator crowd chanting that they want a touchdown right now. Maho under center. Full house backfield. Going to pass the football here. Has no one. Scrambles. What a throw from Maho on the run. And guess who? Connor Durant gets his third receiving touchdown of the game. Maho his fourth because he snuck one in. And Maho making a small case for himself. That throw was impressive. He's on the run, eluding a defender, and puts the ball only where his tight end in this case can make the catch, and Durant with the sure hands brings in his third touchdown. Connor Durant entering today had two receptions for three yards on the season. <laughs> his average just went up a little bit. They're going to go for two here, fade route to Durant, and Durant can't make There's the catch. There's a hanky on the field. So that will be defensive pass interference. So we'll retry it from the one. Here's the call from the official. Well, just when we want to give our next level student athlete of the game away to Michael Kerr, Connor Durant puts his name in the stat sheet once again, getting his third touchdown reception. You now the Gator sideline must be streaming, stream at sports as well, because every time you say something, the, uh, uh, the, the opposing the player opposing, right. makes a play. <laughs> Well, that time, 
Good play. Naharo throws the football to the far side. Wide receiver couldn't come down with the football. That was 26, Anthony Moore. Still Gators increase their lead, 46 to 21, 903 remaining here in the fourth quarter. So under 10 minutes to go. Big lead for Stanley Lake. The Rams come back out and it's gotta be time to take a couple of shots downfield. As much as you wanna love to hand the ball off to Chance Boyce and let your star player make plays, you're just simply running out of time at this point. I think this is kind of the last drive where you can still, in your mind, think that you can put something deep down the field and get yourself back into this football game. Anything past this, though. Time is not on the side of the Rams. Gators cheerleading team doing their jumping jacks to 46 now. Oh, that's a lot of jumping jacks, Josh. Got to feel good for them down there, though. I think they came up short. That definitely wasn't 46. They agreed with me. <laughs> yeah, counting by twos, as Phil said. Get them out of the way. I think I used to do that in gym class. That's why I'm up here calling the game. <laughs> and not down there. <laughs> Suing kick returned to about the 44-45 yard line for Green Mountain. And that's where the Rams will start this drive. Under nine minutes to go now. You could be the next challenger to survive the dungeon. An intense workout designed by athletic trainer and former Bronco Matt McChesney. Tweet hashtag I can handle the dungeon to at 60 strength on Twitter for more info. The Rams come back out. It's going to be Dylan Jacob again. Derek Hayward he only got the series earlier and kind of the change of pace with the whole read option situation, but we haven't seen him since the second quarter. It's Jacob and Boyce in the backfield. He's going to call for motion. Running away from us is Colin Helmet. Trying to set up the screen for Boyce. Boyce makes one person miss. Out to the 50 now. And out of bounds after about a six yard gain. So Boyce makes the first defender miss. I still like trying to get the ball in the hands of your best playmaker offensively. Earlier on in the drive. And stops the clock. Make it seven yards, second and three. And as you said, stop the clock. 8.48 to go in the game. Rams break the huddle. Jacobs and Boyce in the backfield by themselves. Four wide receivers. Trips on the far side. And there's the snap. Got a flag down. As the ball was snapped, Jacobs rolling and just throws that football away. Let's see what this penalty is. The other tight end for the Gators also doubling his defensive end, got off the line very quickly there to create the pressure. Referees are huddling. That was Gladstone, the senior. It looks like it's going to be on the Gator. Nope, it is on Green Mountain. Ball start. So kind of in the story of the night. As that play went as far as long as it did for a false start. Yeah, they usually blow it dead quickly. Well, you're right. It, it's been the theme of the night for the Rams. It's the mistakes that they've had just getting the ball into play. Started early with one drive, seeing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back penalties, and we were talking about a third and 31 at one point early in the first half for the it Rams. Was a fourth and 36 is what it ended what up it being. Turned, yeah, it ended with... So now second and eight after the illegal formation. Jacobs takes the snap. He's throwing the football, and that one just got away from him a little bit, sailed. That was Gladstone again coming off the edge with the pressure. Looks like his intended receiver on that far side was Sean Carlson. So now Boyce, Jacobs alone in the backfield, four wide receivers. Green Mountain. There's the snap. Jacobs, three step drop. Gets rid of the football. Going to be close to a first down. Depends on the mark. See if the referees. It looks very close. It, it should be enough for first down. They're going to bring him out. Based on the angle of the far side down. of the screen, that's first down. You see the referee signal. So they do mark for the first down. A completion from Jacobs. 
First and 10 from the 47. Rams in the shotgun formation. Here's Jacobs, he'll hand off this time. Chance Boyce. Tries to keep those nowhere. legs churning, but he's gonna lose about three yards on the play. See the Gator defender, that's number 73. He had his hands around the waist of Boyce, did Ryan Wosk, and didn't let him go. Shows the strength of Wosk, because we know Boyce can keep the feet moving. 6'2", 195 is Wosk. And a senior. Good tackle, good wrap up there to keep Boyce from getting even back to the line of scrimmage. We're looking at second and 13 now from the 50. 8.01, clock stopped. Seems like there's a bit of confusion here. Yeah, the referees huddled up with the football. Don Morse barking at the officials or his players. There we go, now the clock Clock's will roll. Gonna wind. Shotgun formation, Jacobs takes the snap, quick turnaround, right play call, get out of bounds, he nice, does. Nice little comeback route for the wide receiver, gets him onto the outside, turns around, past the defender, close to a first down. It's 47, Sean Carlson, Dakota Agata on the tackle for Stanley Lake. It's a great play call there. Quick little turnaround, hitch route, get the football, gain some yards and get out of bounds. Again, shotgun formation, Jacobs gonna throw, slant route this time through the hands of his intended receiver, that time 44, Col Colton Hellman, excuse me. You know, it would appear with seven minutes and 48 seconds left that Stanley Lake's lead is pretty safe here, but I like the urgency that the Rams are having getting up to the line of scrimmage and trying to conserve as much time as possible. Timeout called by the Rams there to save some of that time. That their second, I believe. You know, it was an incomplete pass anyway, so the clock was not moving. This one kind of a, what are we gonna do here on a fourth and two timeout? And only one timeout remaining for each team. So 46 to 21. And of course, we'll give you our next level student athlete player of the game. And we've kind of talked about it throughout the broadcast, Adam. Connor Durant, Michael Kerr, Naharo, you throw in there now because he scored four, four touchdowns, touchdowns, three in the air, himself. snuck one in. So a few candidates, and I like what you said, maybe mention that entire Gators defense as a nominee or runner-up, if you will. And really, you could take any of those three guys offensively. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kerr really doing some special things, 99-yard touchdown run, you have to take that into account, but three touchdowns on the day for the tight end as well. Jacobs under center this time, hands off to the fullback. They just needed that first down. Looks like they got it. Should be well enough. With a couple of yards to spare, and that'll move the chains for Green Mountain. Rams are actually going to huddle up here, getting the play in from the sideline. You get a chance for the clock to stop as the chains move. Now they begin to roll again as the chains are set. First and 10 from the 36, seven and a half minutes to go. Green Mountain driving but trailing 46 to 21. Jacobs in the shotgun, Boyce right next to him on his right side. Read option again, Jacobs will keep this one, trying to break to the outside. And tripped up at about the 28. Tries to make a cut back inside, but tackle made by the Gators defender. Kellen Muller playing both sides of the football, comes up with the tackle that time. Thought Jacobs may try to beeline it out of bounds to stop the clock, yeah. but he cut back inside to try to get that extra couple of yards. Probably thought he was gonna get tackled either way. Might as well try and make a defender miss. Same formation, two wide receivers. Jacobs in the shotgun, voice right next to him. Read option one more time, and once again, Jacobs keeps the football. Yeah, a couple of run two. plays back to back on the read option. Either way, even the way that you, you read it, you're gonna hand off the football. You're not gonna get the clock to stop in any mm -hmm. capacity. Read option has worked pretty well in the second half for the Rams. So still 5.50 to go on the clock. If there is a turnover on downs here, you'd imagine Green Mountain would get one more offensive possession unless Stanley Lake does everything perfect. Here's Jacob, three-step drop, passes the football. That's gonna be enough for a first down. Quick slant route. Then just right enough side, two wide receivers. Read option again. This time play action. Going to look. Looking across the middle. 
and trying to find number 28 on the crossing route. That's Josiah Bales, who we talked about in the first half. Going to bring up second and 10. Second and 10. Rams continue to drive. 5.21 to go. On the 24 yard line. Under center this time is Jacobs. Boyce by himself in the backfield. Two wide receivers. Going to turn around, play action again to Boyce. Jacobs has to scramble, throws the football, trying to fit it in a small window. Boyce is asking for a penalty. Not going to get it. Who else? Connor Durant on the defense. Playing both sides of the football as well. Making the big catch. That time defending the catch. So make it third and ten. Jacob's calling the play now. I do like the way Jacobs responded from the rough first half not being able to move the football with all the penalties that they had, but he's really kind of taking control of the offense. Yeah. With Boyce not being able to break anything open, you got to throw the football. Play action again to Boyce, but that time Jacob's in trouble. Spun around to avoid pressure, but ends up in the arms of number six, Grant Gladstone, who picks up the sack. Who's been threatening all drive here, yeah. coming off the edge with the pressure. So that's going to set up fourth down from the 34-yard line for the Rams, fourth and 20 for Green Mountain. So this could be their last shot at putting the ball in the end zone before this thing goes final. No 52-yard field goal attempt? <laughs> well, the air's thin. <laughs> there are over 5,500 elevation here that's in Arizona. Right. Under center is Jacobs. Boyce back behind him by himself. Two wide receivers. The two tight ends break. Looking downfield. This one intercepted. Going the other way now. It's Connor Durant. Still on his feet. We know he can make plays. He's still on his feet. Going to run right through him. Still going to the 30-yard line. Down at about the 27-yard line. An interception. Because what else for, for Connor Durant other tonight? Than Connor Durant. <laughs> As we talk about who our next level student athlete player of the game is going to be, Connor Durant says, hey, don't forget about me just yet. So that should be it. We should see some clock killing yeah, going on here. A couple of turn around, hand the football off, let Kellen Muller and Anthony Moore carry it to the finish. Once again, we want to mention some of our sponsors and thank them. Colorado Football Magazine, the only high school football magazine in Colorado. 6-0 strength, training athletes for the highest level of competition, and of course, pro player services for the next level student athlete player of the game. These businesses are making a difference in Colorado high school sports. Also, Colorado businesses, you could be a part of these broadcasts. Sponsorship opportunities are limited, so contact us to secure a spot in next week's broadcasts and for future games. Well, 4.06 is left here. At the NAC. North Area Athletic Complex is where we are. This is Stream at Sports. Thank you for being with us. Thanks to all those sponsors Adam has mentioned for making this broadcast possible. So the final timeout called. And the Gators run back towards the field. As I said, this should just be a few simple turnaround, hand the football off, and kill this clock. Nahuo and I'm thinking that the cheer, this cheer squad is hoping for that too so they don't have to do any more jumping jacks tonight. <laughs> well, if they're doing this in twos, as Phil said, they'll be over 50. That's only 25 jumping jacks. That's still a lot to me, Josh. <laughs> Hand off on the right side there for no game. So it'll be second and 10. We see 45 running onto the field. It's Israel Rebal. So now he's going to call the play. 
clock's rolling. We're coming up on three and a half to go. Looks like he did pick up a yard on that last play. Second and nine from the 27 for the Gators. Under center, Nahro takes the snap. Turn around, hand it off. Is that more? That was actually 28. Ty Hammett getting his second carry of the game. So Coach Don Morris letting some of his younger guys get a shot here. Ty Hammock, just a sophomore. And now we are under three minutes to go here in the game. Aho again under center, just one wide receiver. He's lined up on the near side. One tied in, the fullback, and a running back. Play action this time. Surprising to see this, but he does complete the pass. That's going to be a first down. They're going to mark him in bounds. No, the clock has stopped, so they must have marked him out of bounds. That'll move the chains, though. I think you just kind of had to do that on third and 12, try and get a first down, right. so now you can kill the rest of the clock. Let's see if the clock starts to roll as soon as those chains are set. We'll see if the referee... I'm going to say he was out of bounds, so it does stop the clock, but you're right, the first down much more important than that clock at this point because now you can just run it out. Alho under center. Ty Hammock in the backfield. See if he gets his third carry of the game. And he does. Trying to spin out a run. He's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second and 13. Hammock, two carries for zero yards last week. So he does lose a couple there. Second and 12 as the clock rolls. 2.15 it reads right now. So we may have a new quarterback in here. It looks like 11, Justin Shoemate. He's going to come in and take this snap. That's the case. Hammock remains in the backfield. Shoemate under center. He calls for the snap. Hands off to Hammock. Hammock's going to pick up a couple. Maybe get back to the original line of scrimmage. Shoemate, the 5'10 junior for Stanley Lake Gators. So Nahara, Nahara the senior. And Shoemate getting some reps as it'll be his team next year getting some reps early this year. 46, 21, third and 11. Here as Shoemate gets the call from head coach Don Morris. And run in and tell his fellow Gators. We have some scores that have gone final. Monarch loses 7 to 2. Grandview wins 49 to 27 over Arapahoe. Hinkley 24 10 over Gateway. Fairview 35 28 Horizon. Horizon. Hanging with Fairview. It's a handoff for a short gain here for the Gators. And that was 22. Jacob Rennie getting a shot. Valor takes the loss to Chandler from Arizona 22 to 7. And in the fourth quarter, have another exciting game that you can hear at streamitsports.com slash chatfield.html. Lakewood's up 22 to 20 over Chatfield right now. So check out that, that game. Side. You hear the Gator crowd stealing a little bit of love from the men's team, the United States men's team. I believe that we will win. I believe that they are right. 46-21, 30 seconds to go. This thing is all but over. <laughs> Hand off, forget it. That was Josh Dover, everyone, just for the record. <laughs> Ty Hammett got his carry, and that should do it. Well, it's a change go. of possession. It was fourth and 14. Oh, they were just running the ball, so we're going to switch over to the Rams here. They're going to come back and run a play. What do you think? A little hook and ladder? Pitch this thing as Why many not? times as you can? <laughs> Not over until the clock reads zeros, right? Not according to that chant that you just <laughs> threw at us. I was just validating student section. Uh, you've been very at one with them tonight. <laughs> yeah. They're right in front of us, and it's their homecoming. It so is it's a homecoming. big night for Stanley Lake. 46 21, 24 seconds left on the clock. Under center is Jacobs. Let's see if they just turn around, hand the football off, and let this clock run out. That's yep. exactly what they're going to do. Big pull, though. Still on his feet. That's number 21, Zach Aku, getting his first carry of the game. Clock Zach. will stop momentarily for the chains to move. Zach Aku, just 5'6", the little guy there, cutting through a couple holes. Yeah. 
13 yards. The clock is rolling now. Let's see if Green Mountain even gets another playoff. Four seconds to go now. I don't think they will. This game is over. 46-21 to final from Mack. Stanley Lake Gators, their homecoming is sweet. They get the win. You hear the student section cheering. And right now, we'll bring you our next level student athlete of the game. Adam Kinney, who did we decide? We're going with Michael Kerr, who does get three touchdowns in an effort that includes a 99-yard touchdown run with two other touchdowns coming off and turnovers in the game. Three touchdowns total on the day for Michael Kerr. That ended preemptively as he left the game with an injury, so who knows what he could have done had he stayed in the game. Very close between him and Connor Durant, but we're going with Michael Kerr. This player is also going to receive a one-year scholarship to the NLSA Game Plan High School program, helping high school students become the total balanced athlete. And as it was all game, as we turned in our player of the game, Michael Kerr, to Alex, Connor Durant comes up with a big interception. He does. To say, <laughs> don't forget about me just yet. Got to say Connor Durant with a great game. Also, Jacob Nahuro, four touchdowns. We talked about three in the air. He could have been any one of those guys you could have given it to. I want to remind you next week, make sure you join us. Friday, we have Grandview against Thunder Ridge. Then Saturday, Arapaho and Hinkley right here at Stream It Sports. So that's going to give it, that's going to do it for us. Up next for the Gators, they go to Littleton next week. That is 9 18, September 18th at 7 p.m. For the Rams, they look to get back in their winning ways they travel to evergreen on the 19th of september thanks to phil alex and gail helping us up here at stream at sports adam kinney i'm josh dover until next time this has been high school football on stream at sports